It's championship Saturday here at Aptos High School. Game number one, the girls of Soquel and Santa Cruz tip off with a chance for an SCCAL championship. Coming up on CTV Sports. Good evening and welcome to the gorgeous gym here at Aptos High School for the SCCAL 2012 Championships. It should be a lot of fun today. And our first game is a rematch of our CTV game of the week last week. With the coach, Kurt Edwards, I'm Tim Swartzen. Kurt, for both these teams, they've gotten to know each other very well, including last week's matchup, as I just mentioned, right here on CTV. They, they know each other way too well between league games, AAU games, and probably pickup games throughout the sun. These, they know exactly what's going on. The coaches know each other. Uh, Tim, one of the things, matchups I want to look at today is the point guard position where you've got Ashley Clausen for Santa Cruz and Tori McBride for the Lady Knights. One's a little younger than the other, and we saw him do battle last time, and McBride really did a fine job, even though Clausen scored over 20 points. Yeah, she made her work very hard for those points. Both these teams last time out, one of them really had to work hard for their victory in the semifinals of this tournament. The other, uh, Soquel, really just rolled. They just flat rolled right on through it. John Wilson's has a team unit. He has Clark in the middle. He's got five or six or seven girls that he can go to, and that's going to be one of the things. Uh, Monique and Pat Jones, we already talked about those. They got Pappas and Clausen. Those are the two. And then it starts to go down. So that's what uh, Soquel's going to try and do is make those other three or four or five people step up and play ball. Real quick, Kurt, uh, last time these two teams met, it was a victory for Soquel rather easily at Santa Cruz. What needs to change this time for the, the Cardinals to come out on top? Well, somebody else is going to have to score outside of the two main guns. And, and who that might be, that's going to be one of the fun things to find out. And the other one is they're just going to have to get more rebounds, they being the Lady Cardinals, just more control of the board. Should be a lot of fun. The Knights and the Cardinals coming up next on CTV Sports. So, Chark up at Back here at so, Aptos High School, it is are. the CTV Sports Game of the Week and a special edition of the Game of the Week, the SCCL Championship. We'll start out with the girls of Santa Cruz and the girls of SoCal. Remind you, CTV Sports is a presentation of Community Television of Santa Cruz County, a nonprofit membership organization serving county residents by providing education and tools to access media. Visit us at communitytv.org. This presentation is made possible in part by the support of Cruz IO Internet, Santa Cruz County's largest independent internet service provider, offering high-speed wireless internet, a co-location data center, and flexible workspace with 10 gigabytes of fiber internet. Details online at cruzio.com. Santa Cruz Diner. At the Santa Cruz Diner, you'll always find great food at a reasonable price. Family-owned and operated since 1998. Santa Cruz Diner is kid-friendly and offers a wide selection of traditional and vegan items. Their great staff and comfortable atmosphere will find you and also make you feel right at home. Featured on the Food Channel, easy to find on Ocean Street in Santa Cruz, on the web at santacruzdiner.com. Great food price right at the Santa Cruz Diner. And by Crafts Body Shop, serving Santa Cruz County since 1965. Crafts Body Shop specializes in all types of collision and auto body shop repairs. Crafts offers free estimates, a lifetime warranty, accepts all types of insurance, and is diamond certified, utilizing state-of-the-art tooling and repair equipment. Crafts dedicated staff will pride with pride in, in resolving all of your vehicle's damages and gaining a customer for life. Call 476-3232 or visit their website at craftbodyshop.com. So we take a look at how these teams matched up and ended up. So Kel earned the one seed, so they were in the home uniform. Santa Cruz, the two, both got first round buys. Santa Cruz had a bit of a time with Scotts Valley, but Soquel really rolled St. Francis in a rematch of last year's championship game. And now we look at the Santa Cruz Sentinel Power Pole. And it sets up just as we figured it would be. Soquel, Santa Cruz right on top, Scotts Valley. Monta Vista Christian has had a great year. St. Francis, who didn't have the year that they had last year, but still quite a good ball club. All the way around Aptos Harbor, Pavaro Valley, San Lorenzo Valley, and Kirby Prep. I actually saw Kirby Prep play. They're not a bad ball club. Yeah, and St. Francis, they got eliminated last week. They'll be playing in the CCS, one of the small divisions, so they'll have a chance to make some noise in the CCS tournament. Both these teams, will, Santa Cruz and Soquel, will also be in the CCS tournament. So we wish them the best of luck after this game 
in that. You, you right. see the head coach, the co-head coach, I should say, Patrick Jones. Here's his and his wife, Monique's, coaches Keats. Well, they're going to have to shut down Graves, and that's going to be kind of easy to do since right now that shooting guard for Sokel isn't there. Limit Sokel's rebounding, and that's, that's going to be key. They're going to have to square off and get them and balance out the scoring. It can't be Pappas and Clausen all the time. There's Pat Jones, great basketball player in his day, which, you know, you're looking at that young face, which couldn't be too many years ago. And there's on the other side, John Wilson on the right, Gus Aguirre, one of the officials. And Coach Wilson, we're going to have to stop Clausen and Pappas, definitely on that one. Offensive rebound. They want to get two, sometimes three shots on the offensive glass and take care of the ball, and that's where Torrey McBride's going to come in. The young sophomore is an outstanding ball handler. Tough, tough nut out there. That's yeah, so a Tori McBride, a very good sophomore. She did a great job against Clawson last time these two teams met. You see John Wilson. Courtside also is Pete Newell Jr., who was a mentor for both these head coaches, and it's great to see Coach Newell Jr. in the house. Now we'll go over to the third member of our broadcast team, Rusty Reed. Well, Tim, we've got a rematch of last week's regular season finale, which certainly had a championship air to it. SoCal won the game despite the great efforts of the dynamic duo, the two senior captains for Santa Cruz, Ashley Clausen and Polly Pappas. Between the two of them, they accounted for 80% of the Cardinals' scoring. So if Santa Cruz has any hopes to win an SCCAL championship this year, the rest of the team has got to rev it up. And one other item of note, SoCal won last week because of their big senior shooting guard, Graves. She led SoCal to the, to the victory last night. She's not in the building tonight. So chalk up an advantage in that column for Santa Cruz. Should be a good one, Tim. Thanks a lot, Rusty. Coming up next, we'll have the opening tip and starting lineups between Santa Cruz and SoCal here at Aptos. It's the SCCL 2012 Championship right here on CTV. Back here on a special edition of the CTV Game of the Week, the SCCL 2012 Championship. Starting lineups being announced for the game between second seeded Santa Cruz and top seeded SoCal. With the coach Kurt Edwards, I'm Tim Swartz. We start out with the Santa Cruz Cardinals, the Joneses, their co head coaches, and Kurt, their starting lineup. We've got them Orpeza, Clausen, Halbleeb, although she's going to be taking play enough. Paul's going to be in the spot for that one. Jamaris and Pappas, and of course we've already talked about Clawson and Pappas and how effective they are for the Lady Knights. Tyler Stewart, McBride, Rocha, Clark, and Diaz. Graves noticeably absent by not being able to be here, so Stewart, who is a very good three-point player, is going to have to step up, and that interior is going to have to do a better job banging the boards for the Lady Knights and their head coach. John Wilson. How does he Willie, change his game plan, you think? He's got to change it. Well, he doesn't have the go-to sp point score getter because that's what Graves has been the last couple of days. There's Monique Jones, the uh, co-head coach for the Santa Cruz Cardinals, and Pat Jones. They've got to be happy that Graves is not in. Graves scored over 20, 25 points in the last time these two teams met, and she was on fire offensively. She's been responsible for a little bit more than, now, maybe a uh, a little less than half of what Soquel can score, but she is the go-to go -to person. So they're going to have to look inside for Clark a lot more, Stewart on the outside, and Rocha to come up big. On the other side for Santa Cruz, uh, we've really mentioned it, we'll mention it again. They have two strong players, maybe two of the three or four best players in the entire league, in uh, Ashley Clausen and Polly Pappas. And both those players averaging over 15 points a game. And of course, the last time they played, they both went 20 points a game. So Kel wins the tip. There's a 41 combined points last time these two teams met. But for those two, it wasn't enough. So Kel was able to win 27 from Regine Graves. We're underway. So Kel is officially the home team as the top seed. Clausen works to looks to work it in transition. So Kel will be wearing their home white uniforms and the traditional Cardinal uniforms with the white and silver for Santa Cruz. Boston had a pretty good look, takes it down the middle, off the foot, here come the Lady Knights. 
Stewart works it in transition, bounces it to McBride. She bounces it off the backboard and in. Early two for the SoCal Knights, they lead 2 0. Good job by McBride to use the glass. So many times players don't use it and end up with a missed shot. Straight away for the freshman, Shiloh Toll is a 5'8 post player. Back out to Clawson, he's headed to Southern Oregon. Right wing, Pappas, pull back, high floater from 13, catches nothing. Ball is loose. Going to be a jump ball. Go out to the Cardinals, but they only have two seconds as the bench over here to my right for Santa Cruz hollers in. Get that ball in, they're going to have to get a shot up. Pretty, pretty quick. Hopefully it'll go to Pappas and she can get one off the fast. Pawson takes it out. Pap is short, and that is a jump ball, or excuse me, a shot clock violation off of the jump ball. You know, that's pretty good for, for uh, Soquel, too, because they don't get the arrow, but they turn the arrow, and they basically get a free turnover with two on the shot clock. Yeah, plus Tall got a foul reaching over the top on that errant shot. So they have a trifecta and not score points. Soquel got it. Roca. Drives right baseline. Dishes out up top for Clark. Rotated down low. McBride lays it up and good. Great movement without the ball by McBride. Torrey does a nice job of continuing to move the ball, working on screens, trying to break free, and she got underneath. And also a nice passing by the SoCal Knights. The outstanding freshman, Diaz, is guarding Clausen. She's bumped off the ball by Tall. Good help side by Clark to deflect it in an errant shot is collected by McBride. McBride almost threw that one away. You gotta be patient, then there's a turnover. Underneath the basket, easy lane for Pappas off the pass for Laura Pesa. And they got a press going. Nice job by Rocha to hit the brakes. Diaz in the lane, hook shot off the glass, it's no good. And Pappas, he's also collects about 10 rebounds a game. Hesitation, dribble drive, high, Archer, no good. The second effort will bounce out for Jamris, but she'll get to the line for two. Melissa in good position to make that rebound. Clark with her first penalty, first foul. First team foul by Sokel. Two for Jamris, and her first is good. Now we talk about the importance of everybody on the floor. One of the huge important things you're going to have on any basketball game are free throws as Melissa drops both of those. 4-4 four, four the score. Both teams are going to have to be very effective from the charity strike. Clark in the backcourt releases to Stewart up the left wing. McBride. Sophomore and one of the quickest players in the league, if not the quickest. Pull up, jumper falls for Stewart from the left side. Nice little pop and stop by Stewart. Good first step. And there's one with a great first step, Clausen. Or a Pesa. Just a little long. A long rebound is collected by Clark off the far corner. McBride in transition forces the issue. Tall deflects it. And here comes Clausen. Got to be able to shut her off so she doesn't get a free shot. Nice little move by Pappas, doesn't fall. McBride collects the rebound. It's been very aggressive defensively for the full court for Santa Cruz. Extremely aggressive underneath. Clark doesn't make it. Well, they're going to have to be aggressive, Tim. You know, they, they want to go down a little bit farther and, you know, get some better shots, and they want to be tough on the rebounds. Pappas to Tall, works it around, or pace the left wing. Just about halfway through the first quarter, 6-4 lead for Sokel, but we're tied up as Clausen pours in her first two for Ashley. When Clausen shoots the ball, she's got tremendous release, good hand and arm strength. Don't you thinking about it. Drugs it around Melissa, doesn't get much. Diaz misses that one. Laura Pesa collects a long rebound. Looks for her point guard, Klaassen. Again, Klaassen's AAU coach, Khalid Hicks, is in the building. He's got several players out there. He does a nice program. He's got a program 
Block underneath against Clark. That's her second foul if it goes against number 22. It does. Colleen Hicks has got a program called Got Game, Get Game. This really, really brings it to him. Nice job down inside to Tall, who goes right to the rack. You see she was able to get that inside shoulder and is able to pivot around Clark. Doesn't make the shot, but is able to get the first of the three throws. So Shiloh doing a nice job of getting in position, getting the shot off, going to the charity stripe. Three free throws by Santa Cruz, three makes. That could be a big, big part of this game. Well, if you remember the the SoCal Santa Cruz game on the boys' side, SoCal's main problem was they couldn't make a free throw. And it came back to haunt them again just recently against Aptos. But the SoCal boys, the uh, CCS will meet on Sunday, and they're going to be in the tournament someplace. Passive press is, is broken quite easily by Soquel. McBride, top of the key. Substitution for the Soquel Knights, up the left wing, Marisa Azua, who is a 5'11 center, a junior. Diaz, right wing, three, no good. I think so far, Diaz has already attempted four shots in the first five minutes. It looks like John Wilson's looking to her to potentially uh, yeah. take out some of the scoring that Graves is missing. There was a double high post here run by the Soquel Knights. Actually, everybody came out to the free throw line and free throw line extended. Good rotation, good movement by Soquel. We've got to start setting some screens. Three right wing, no good for Stewart. Now Stewart does like that shot, but here comes Clawson, and she's going to attack the basket. She waits for the rest of the Lady Cardinals to get in position. Pull back three, left iron, no good. Not a lot of rhythm when she took that shot. I mean, it had a good trajectory, but that jump back is a little tough to throw it, throw down. Azua through the lane and a blocking foul call. Now we've talked before, Tim, on how I like it. If you've got an, uh, an opportunity to go in the lane, you've got a seam, you take that. Somebody's going to have to stop you. If they don't stop you, you've got that easy layup. You know, otherwise, you know, take that foul, go to the charity stripe. Foul was against... Shane Hableb. That was the second team foul against the Santa Cruz Cardinals. Checking in for the first time for the Cardinals is Ashley Larkin. Larkin is a call up from the JV team. This is the second free throw is no good. And the offensive rebound to Bertelson. Bertelson's wide open, left wing, and she pours in a three. Ashley got a great look. Here comes Pappas, not really hesitating the Cardinals. They get the ball down to the attack side of the basketball court. 10-7, Soquel leads. Bertelson will collect the rebound with 2-0-1, and counting remaining in the opening frame of this four-quarter matchup. Again, double high post. McBride's got a nice look. And an open three to she buries. Well, McBride, in the last time these two teams hooked up, didn't score to the fourth quarter, and she has seven in the first for a five-point lead for the Knights. Well, the Knights know that they're going to have to make up for Graves' absence. Here's a long three for Larkin. That one doesn't catch rim. McBride, three on three if she hurries. Right wing. Roca just checked back into the game. Dumps it down. Azua, turn around. Left-handed hook shot is good. And a seven-point lead for the Knights. Notice how Azua used her body to back on in and just back the opponent down. Great job and a nice little spin move and a good hook. And the last time she did that against Hablib, Hablib was called for a foul, so it looks like she gave her a little bit more extra space. Just, a, yeah, just enough that Azua was able to get deeper in there and get a good percentage shot. Right wing, Pappas. That's a big three to try to break down that zone. Four-point lead for the Lady Knights. Quickly down the floor. McBride up top. Swings right side for Roca. Roca dumps it down. Diaz, double team, bounce back out. Roca, three on the way, just off. That one bounced over the backboard. 
Pretty live rim. Of course, when you get that far shot, you've got that high arching angle to come down. So when it hits, it then has a tendency to either bounce farther out or just go right over the top. Yeah. You see what type of a rotation that the Cardinals are going to get into is Clawson brings the ball down the floor. So that a six-second shot clock, game clock differential. How would you describe the zone? It's almost of a matchup type of a zone. You know, it's a two-three, but they're really extending out. They're going to force the Cardinals to take a long shot. And Larkin misses a three. Offensive rebound. Jamras lays it back and in. She's got four in the first quarter. Eight well, seconds remaining in the first. McBride pushes the ball down. They can't dilly-dally around. Let's see what Bartleson gets through the travel. You know when he's got eight seconds, you've got to have a play with a sense of urgency. And he went into the hands of Bertelson, and she didn't. It sort of stopped right there. 1.6 seconds. They throw it to Clawson in the backcourt. And Clawson will just let it run out of the first quarter. 15-13 in the 2012 Girls Championship here on CTV. The lead for SoCal. We'll be back with the second quarter. We'll stay here for the second quarter. 15-13 is the score. SoCal leads Santa Cruz. And uh, any thoughts from the first quarter, Kurt? Well, I was impressed the way that McBride came out. She looks like she's going to take the whole load on her shoulders from Graves not being there. I also liked what was going on inside. Azu was doing a good job. CTV Sports, it's our home team, folks. SCCAO Wrestling Championships on February the 26th. Let's hear what Coach Jones has to say. Now they're trying to post you up a little bit. They'll go into Diaz. You're doing a good job. Well, you don't want to do a swing. Okay, no swing. So you're doing a good job. Just play between her and the basket. Make her shoot over you. Okay? And then I don't know if we need you to double so hard if you're leaving the post. Okay? All right. Hey, against that 131, 21 loop. Okay, look to drive. And have a nice kick out. We'll take their bucks. All right? Back in the fist, though. We can't let them get any Back Here we go. Two more. Go. Team. Coach Jones, cool, calm, and assertive. That was a changeup. They're gonna go cool, calm, and collected, but that's, the, <laughs> that's in the mind of uh, Coach Edwards. Is with Kurt Edwards, I'm Tim Swartz, and uh, Kurt, you coach so many places. You coached here, I know, at Aptos. You coach girls basketball, boys basketball, baseball, football. What what, what did you enjoy a lot about uh, when you coached girls basketball? Actually, just the teaching aspect of it and the camaraderie on the court for the girls. They really, really work hard together. They're up there to improve. Good job underneath by Clark to get that rebound. And they'll reset with a fresh 30 seconds. Two point lead for the SoCal Knights. Little rotation for the SoCal Knights. Clark looking underneath, nice job. Great feed, Roca lays it up and good with her left hand. Very patient on the offense were the Lady Knights. They kids shifted up and down, setting screens, and then and Rocha found herself wide open underneath. Pappas, high right side. They work it around the arc, back to the man-to-man. -man. Clawson, they're trying to, to set a curl. Trying to set a screen for her. Jamris is open underneath. And they'll find her, or a pace of feeds her down low. We'll see what type of defense the Cardinals bring out. Man to man right now. Here's your rotation. Nice little pick and roll. Nothing there. And they'll set it up one more time. Stewart tries to come through the lane. Diaz, step back, catches nothing. And Oropesa picks up the loose ball, hands it off to her point guard, the senior Clausen. Hollers out the offensive pattern. Orapesa rolls back up in front. There goes to look for Pappas. She's got it. And Pappas off the hesitation move. Had the angle on Diaz. And a slight push will be called against Clark. And that's her third personal. That time, it is the Soquel Knights did not do a nice job of screening out. Pappas gets down underneath, allowing everybody to be free. Hobley was able to be in there and force Clark farther underneath the basket. She makes that part of the free throw. And the bad part about it is that's a big part of Soquel's, the Lady Knights offense and defense is number 22, Clark. 
And we probably won't see much of her for the rest of the second quarter. Zuleka Rodriguez has replaced her. The second free throw is no good. Still just a one point lead for Soquel. They led by as many as seven in the first quarter. Looking to see some kind of emotion. Moving screen. Moving screen. Yes. Yeah, against Diaz. That's the fourth team foul. Yeah, that's a, that is a foul that's common. I don't care what level of ball you're in, whether it's high school, grammar school, or NBA. There's John Wilson, the head man for the Lady Knights. You're supposed to set a screen. You see it's not going to be effective. You try and slide on out, but you've got three officials working the floor. They're going to catch it. Underneath, Pappas off the feed. Give an assist on a great feed from Hadley. Seven points now on the evening for Pappas. He starts to smell a little bit more on the offense. Diaz, such so trouble early on, taking about six shots. You have to score McBride. Weaves through the zone. Step back, Stewart three, in and out. Jammers with the rebound. Melissa's gonna give it up to Ashley. A lot of pushing and shoving inside between Pablo and Rodriguez. Uh, Melissa says, I'm going to travel. No ticket necessary. Yeah, she had an open lane in the basket, and I think she got a little bit ex too excited. Brings right in there with the hot dog. I got, I got nobody in front of me. And a timeout called for by Coach Wilson. 30-second timeout by Soquel. And Johns has to be somewhat happy of what the Knights are doing, even though they're down by one. But I know he would like to see a little bit more assertiveness in, in how they're running their offense, and especially doing defensively. There's Clark. Snicks it inside. Nice job to Rocha. You can see movement from the top. Once Clark steps inside, the defense shifts to her. If you can have movement, either stepping away or continuing to go to the basket, that person coming towards the bucket, they're going to get a ball. They're going to get some attention. So you just might as well pass it off unless, you know, you've got that nice clean open shot. That time Clark did a nice job of just finding Rocha for the easy layup. Sokel, again, they haven't really had any trouble with this full court pressure. And this time Stewart takes it all the way to the hoop. Nice help side defense. Happily up the court to Kloss in a one-point lead for Santa Cruz, their first lead of this game. Rodriguez almost picked Pappas' pocket. Looks like a switch on all screens defense, and that time it confuses Santa Cruz. The steal to Roca, one-handed heave pass, too strong to Rodriguez. That's one of those situations where you see the open pass, and Sometimes you just might as well swallow that pass and move the ball down. Pat Jones, head man, great basketball player in his career at Santa Cruz High School. But you just, you know, sometimes that extra pass is one too many. Clawson forced the issue and she'll pick up a pair of free throws. It's against Rodriguez, the foul. Clawson saw that opening that you alluded to, Tim, and then just immediately went right through the gears very, very quickly. You've got to keep a body in front of her. If she passes off, she's doing you a favor. Unless, of course, she's passing it off to Pappas. The <laughs> fifth team foul against the Knights. Clawson will go to play Division II basketball in Southern Oregon. His second free throw is good. And we were talking to her AAU coach before last game. He thought she did get some Division I chances on cue. She picked up the steal, but... She felt the most comfortable in Southern Oregon, so that's where she ended up. Pappas, nice turnaround with the right hand. She throws it in, and nine points, which leads all scores for the freshman, for the senior Pauly Pappas. Now that defense is getting a little bit tough. It's right not in the ball game to captain that basketball down the floor. And you can see that Soquel's having a little bit of trouble. Yeah, McBride wasn't in the game for Soquel the last couple of possessions when they've had trouble working the ball down the floor. And now McBride comes in. Somebody has to come out. There we go. Bertelson comes out. 
Also in the game is Azua, number 30. So a little bit of a different lineup, more of the starting lineup. There's two people that go after each other a lot, and that's Clausen and McBride on the same AAU team. Nice pick set by Orpeza. And the back door to Pappas, high off the glass and in. She's in double figures. And a seven point lead for Santa Cruz after Soquel had a seven point lead in the first. I believe this was a, a, a 15 to eight game at one point. So this is a 16 to two run. And just as I say that, the three is poured in by Tori McBride, her second trifecta of the day. Now again, Soquel, the Lady Knights are going to have to do a better job of boxing out on the boards and keeping their eye on whoever it is they're guarding on this man-to-man -man defense that the Lady Knights are putting on the Lady Cardinals. 24-20, 250 remaining in the first half. 2012 SCCAL Championship. Good and switch. Steal. McBride tries to pass it up to Azua. Pappas reached in on her and is called for a foul. Of course, last season, Soquel, under semi-similar circumstances, they were the favorite coming into the championship game. They were without Regine Graves, and they were shocked in double overtime by the St. Francis Sharks. Right, tried another three. The shot's no good. And Pappas. Picks up the rebounds. Yeah, Pappas, as you said, averages right around 10 rebounds a game. Long range five. Yeah, Larkin pours it in. No press this time. But put on by Santa Cruz. Here comes McBride. Just, they just need more motion being the Lady Knights. They're getting some decent looks. And let's see what we got a foul. Clawson is going to get called with a push. Clawson doesn't more like say. a traffic jam. Yeah, when she comes through a screen, she lowers well, her shoulder and delivers a blow. You know, you're taught as a basketball player to fight your way through a screen. That means drop your shoulder a little bit or find find that little gap in that screen and get through it. Sometimes you may get called for a, a push or something like that. Sometimes you may get them called for a blocking foul. Annalise Bryant with the ball. A senior, 5'6", guard into the game for the first time. McBride just drives through three players. Throws that one up, it's no good. Azua ripped it away from Hamley. Jump ball calls. Possession is pointing to Santa Cruz. That was well played underneath. And Azua doing a nice job of aggressively going at the, after the ball and not getting a foul called against her. So the two main offensive thrusts for Santa Cruz and the ball off to each other. Pappas brings it in to Clausen. Clausen slowly crosses half court. Pappas collects left elbow. She drives in on Diaz. It's no good. And the rebound was picked up by the traveling called Oropesa fell to the floor. She fell to the floor and got that dribble started very quick, but apparently slid just a little bit too much. Gus Aguirre, the official on that side, made the call. Patrick Jones didn't agree with that one. He thought Oropesa, she fell down, started a dribble. 27-20 the lead for the Santa Cruz Cardinals. Mazua way out top. You can see this nice little... Start down low, bring it back outside. Azur, turn around, too strong. All alone, Oropesa, who has yet to score tonight, but Oropesa has been really, including that last time she was called for traveling, has really cleaned up the boards. She's done a nice job. Gutner works very hard to get in good position to get the rebound. Larkin, left wing, three on the way, in and out. Rebound tipped around to Diaz. Roach has got a look at that one. Not going to do it. Good pulls up her dribble. Good job. And Clawson Settle that offense. Has really been on her all night and has done a really nice job. As I say that, Roca comes through the lane and just misses the shot. Clawson, two on one. Takes it all the way herself. She's fouled by McBride, who helps her up. Another yeah, long time, friends. Bryant, number 13, did a good job of hustling back down the floor. McBride loses that half a step. Now, what Bryant could have done on that one, 
as granted there was another lady cardinal coming down on the left hand side but she could have stepped up and stopped that ball and either force the pop and shoot stop the momentum or, or a pass off now sometimes tim on a situation like that you're darned if you do and darned if you don't if you stop the ball and there's two other people coming down on the wings which is the way you're supposed to run a fast break and, and you yourself have watched uh, Stanford, the Lady Cardinal, they run that fast break very, very well. In and out for Clausen. And you're talking to uh, Clausen's AAU coach, and he thought she could play a Pac-12, and as somebody who watches and calls a lot of Pac-12 games, I definitely think Clausen's tough enough defensively, she can run the fast break. You see Clausen just contest that three. The shot clock was dead, so Kelf shot with 10 seconds left. Clausen drives, left side, swings, Larkin, three, good luck, in and out. For a pace up, that one would have counted. It's no good, and we have reached halftime. 27-20, Santa Cruz leads Soquel. Knights held to just five points in that second quarter of play. And really in the first half, Soquel had a 15-8 lead. And they uh, just really couldn't score. They got outscored at one point. It was about a, a 16 to two run for the, the Santa Cruz Cardinals. They held Clausen in check pretty well, just four. But Polly Pappas, the other head of that two headed monster, had 11 points in the first half. Patrick Jones is standing by with the third member of our broadcast crew, Rusty Reed. Pat, here we go. You must be pretty happy with things up 27-20. Yeah, well, I mean, the score is nice, but I, you know, I think we can do some things a lot better. We, uh, you know, we let them score some buckets that we could have stopped. Uh, we have a little bit of confusion on defense, but, um, you know, we have a little bit more balance on our offense than we have in the past, so that's good. Yeah, last week you relied on just the two, and, and Pat has had a great first half, but you a lot of good balance from all ages. Yeah, from all ages. Well, uh, you know, we found Melissa underneath the basket a couple times, and then we were able to get him some turnovers, which then in the fast break situation, it's, it's whoever's open. So, you know, the girls move the ball pretty well, and uh, hopefully we can, you know, maybe get some more turnovers in the second half. Yeah. All right, good luck. Great. Thank you. All right, Pat Jones, Santa Cruz High, but girls basketball coach heading in for the half. Santa Cruz up 27 to 20. We'll be back with the second half right after this. Twenty-seven twenty, Santa Cruz leads Soquel at the half here in the 2012 SCCAL Championship. We want to thank some of the people that helped make this presentation possible. Santa Cruz Diner, you always find great food at reasonable prices. Family owned and operated since 1998. Santa Cruz Diner is kid friendly and offers a wide selection of traditional vegan items. Their great staff and comfortable atmosphere will make you feel right at home. Featured on the food channel, you can find on Ocean Street in Santa Cruz. On the web at santacruzdiner.com. Great food, price right at the Santa Cruz Diner. And Crafts Body Shop, serving Santa Cruz County since 1965. Crafts Body Shop specializes in all types of collision and auto body shop repairs. Crafts offers free estimates, a lifetime warranty, accepts all types of insurance, and is diamond certified. Utilizing state-of-the-art tooling and repair equipment, Crafts' dedicated staff takes pride in resolving all of your vehicle's damages and gaining a customer for life. Call 476-3232 or visit us at craftsbodyshop.com. Standing by courtside is Rusty Reed with Sohel head, head coach John Wilson. Sohel coach John Wilson, so two words for you, coach. Tori McBride, 10 points in the first half. Yeah, she had a nice half. We just need some of the other girls to pick it up on offense. We need a little bit more scoring from the rest of the girls, that's for sure. Yeah, so Tori, is the good news. The bad news, you're down by seven here at the half. What would you tell the girls to adjust? Uh, we just have to have a little bit more patience on offense. Uh, you know, we're getting shots. I think we can get better shots, and we just got to keep playing hard like they're doing, and we'll be fine. All right, you win, and you have the league championship all to yourselves. Yes, yes. Good luck. Have Thank a good you. second half, John. Thanks for stopping by. All right, over to you, Tim. Thanks so much, Rusty. And we are here with the coach, Kurt Edwards. We'll take a look at this first half. Tori McBride was very strong early on in this one. The first quarter was all about Soquel, really. Early on, they opened up as big as a seven-point lead, and there's they, McBride, they first did, basket of the game. Yes, they did a good job pushing the ball down the floor. Their offense beat 
it was in just a much better pacing than they came up in the second half. Azua doing a nice job. You see she's able to fake one side and use that beautiful left-handed hook to get that bucket right down in against Hobley, who's guarding her. So that was the 15 to eight lead. And then Santa Cruz will go on a 16 to two run in the middle of that first half, which really I think was the story of the first half. It was, and the big story was down underneath, Tim. As you can see right now, Melissa doing a good job underneath. They're getting first, you know, they're getting second shots all the way through. Pappas establishes her presence down underneath the boards, misses that shot, but battles back for the rebound. And that nice little hook move gets those two points. So Santa Cruz doing a good job of, like I said before, establishing what they want to do. And one of the reasons is they've got an outside game that's also been very, very effective. It's, as they're going back to Larkin and just dropping those three bombs in there. So outside, inside, Santa Cruz is really being effective. So Kel, a little slow getting the ball down on offense. Tim, I have to, you know, they missed Graves last year. They're missing Graves this year too. And Santa Cruz outscored SoCal in the second quarter, 14 to five after SoCal took the first quarter. What do you see that was different in the second quarter? Well, again, as I said before, a lot of stuff that was inside. They were starting to get inside Pappas and everybody. SoCal was beating Santa Cruz, excuse me, Santa Cruz was beating SoCal down the floor. And they were able to get good presence, box out, really deny any opportunity for a defense rebound for the SoCal Knights. So the offensive board was owned by Santa Cruz. And SoCal, they got the 10 from McBride, but other than the 10, but McBride, there's nobody else who scored more than three. So they need somebody else to, to step up and uh, add some scoring. So if you want to get a DVD of today's games or any of the other great games that we've done, Tim and I have done throughout the, uh, so far this part of the school year, copies are $25. Learn more about it at communitytv.org for the dubs, backslash dubs. Or if you use the old fashioned way, you can call us at 425-8848. I still have a rotary phone, do you? What is that? <laughs> it's an old time phone. So you, you dial it up and the operator comes on and says, how may I connect your call? And then you have to, you have to run to the place and, and yeah. pop in the, the wires yourself? Exactly. Well, so Kel comes out of their huddle and yeah, I will say, the one key is during that 16 to two run for Santa Cruz, McBride missed a bit of time in that run, and I don't think she's going to sit the rest of this game. She might not. She's the one person to get the ball down the floor effectively for the Lady Knights. Second half underway. So Kel will move left to right on your screen. They're the one seed, so they're wearing their home uniforms. And Santa Cruz in their road Cardinal uniforms for the Cardinals. They'll be moving right to left. Diaz is giving up her dribble, so the Knights are going to have to come to her aid. Diaz through the lane travels. I have a feeling that that call was uh, attributed to, to Coach Pat Jones, who was screaming for a walk, and the referee, John Hadley, gave it to him. There was a travel in there anyways. Clawson slowly up the court. Over to the right wing for Pappas. Santa Cruz Cardinals, proud program. Trying to get back on top. Left wing, or a pace. That's a two-pointer, her foot was on the line. She did not score in the first half, but she pours in two big ones there. Well, both of these ball clubs are gonna advance onto the CCS dance, but SoCal would definitely love it if they could be the undisputed champion of the SCCAL. McBride gets a step on Kloss and goes underneath, lays it up. Misses it, but she's fouled, so she's gonna get a chance to go to the charity stripe. And for the CCS basketball tournaments, something that's a little bit different as opposed to the uh, football. The football is based on power points, so you can't argue. And some other sports as well, most sports actually in the CCS are based on power points, as McBride is up to 11 points. But basketball is not. It is a sport, both free throws are good, that is based on uh, just representatives from leagues arguing, really. Oh, the, the, those, those meetings are fun. Yeah, you get the power points, and then you get a whole bunch of teams that have about the same number of power points. Then it becomes the reputation of a coach, the reputation of a league. 
who do you have on your side? And sometimes the number one team looks up and goes, I can beat that team. I may not beat that team. I want that one. <laughs> Over the top. Where's the help? Where's the help? But I think the, the big point with that, with the CCS, is winning a outright regular season in a tournament championship would have a lot of weight for Soquel if they can come back. They would, and down inside, Diaz gets the ball tied up. Or do we have a foul? We have a foul. Jamaris is going to be called for it. Melissa Jamaris, that is her first foul. First team foul in the second half. Ball's released right side for Stewart. McBride back up top against the 2-3 zone. You watch McBride, she gets rid of the ball quick on her passes. She gets the ball real quick. Pappas with the block. And you see Clawson, when she collects the ball, her head immediately goes up. Pulls up, left free throw line extended, can't get the roll. Rebound to Stewart. Right wing, Rocha down low. Diaz can't get her first basket but she'll get a chance at the free throw line. Foul. Shane Halbert with that foul. I think that might be her, possibly her third, yes. Diaz, the freshman. All free throws are important, and when you are behind, they become even more important. Especially for Soko, who just had five in the second quarter. Not much rotation. And sometimes when you get that rotation on the ball, Tim, that little, that little backspin when they when they get it, it's a little softer as it gets into that cylinder. Not as much rotation. The ball tends to rattle around just a little bit. Both of those rattled on out for Diaz. Soquel Knights having some trouble offensively. They've scored just seven points since the first quarter. We've got four, five, 24 in the third. Left a seven point lead for the Cardinals. He is on Pappas. Nice, nice screen switch. Wide open shot for Clausen. Straight away, Clausen. Nice touch. You were just talking about the touch, actually. And she just showed a nice rotation. Clausen with the foul against her AAU running mate. Uh, McBride, that's a second foul on number 14, Clausen. And yeah, and down here there was a nice little screen. Pappas put a nice screen. McBride could not fight through it. Clausen had basically a free throw. Stewart, reverse lane is too strong. Clark fought for the rebound for Soquel. And you see courtside, we mentioned earlier, the mentor for both these head coaches, Pete Newell Jr. Yeah, we got the coach's corner over there. Pete Newell on, the, on over there. Stu Walton, there's John Wilson, not a happy camper. Monique Jones, Pat Jones, right next to us. Just, you know, a, a, quite a good crowd here. A lot of basketball enthusiasts. McBride pulls up the floater from Tangs. Too strong. The second effort, and Clark was knocked on the arm. Well, that time Clark did a great job using her body, getting in good position to get the rebound. A little floater up beneath when you see Clark had already established good inside position, used her body to screen off the defender. Now she gets the opportunity to go to the charity stripe. That is the fourth against Habley. And Tall will check in for Habley. You had mentioned before that you thought Santa Cruz is playing a very aggressive ball game. Uh, today and they are and I think they have to Clark makes both free throws four for six from the line for Soquel in the second half that's their only points in the second half and you know, one that you want to try and cut there's an again a nice green good switch by the Soquel Knights now you might have just a little bit of a mismatch Pappas doing a good job up again Pappas First time she's lit up the scoreboard in the second half, and it's up to a nine-point lead for the Santa Cruz Cardinals. You know who's actually gone quiet right now is McBride, even though she has, you know, she had a couple free throws. She's got 12 points on the afternoon. You got to get the ball to her. She's got a good look at a three. 
beautiful pass. It's in and out. Good job by Tyler Stewart, though. She gave her a perfect pass to give her a wide open three against the aggressive defense. But Santa Cruz, the aggressive defense that time worked out in their favor, stealing the ball away. Pappas, high right side. Tall wasn't expecting the pass. Knocks it down and collects it. Pappas out of his screen. Roca fouled her. And blocking foul. You can see the defense was moving, and Pappas realized that as she came around the top. From the left back over to the right, there's a shot of Rocha. And Pappas, when you know that you've got your player, your defender, backing up, keep taking them to the basket because you're going to get that blocking foul called against them. First free throw is no good for Pappas. <laughs> That was the first team foul against Soquel, and there have been already five against Santa Cruz in the first less than five minutes. Pappas makes the second. First double-digit lead for either team today. 34-24 Santa Cruz. Jamris. Yep. Just call underneath. Call for the foul. No, it is Jammers on the wrist. Second foul on number 13, Jammers. I don't wonder up on that fall. It just seemed like it was just part and parcel to the play. Up top for Bertelson. Looks to release. McBride, that pass is too tall for her from Stewart. One thing that Soquel can't do, or they're going to have to really fight hard not to do, is panic. You still have a lot of basketball to be played. A credit, watch Tall really moving. She's at the top, right at the free throw line, working hard against Azua. Pappas, this double team, leaves it wide open, or a piss. That one is too strong. Rebound tipped around. It's off of Soquel's hands. It's not able, Soquel is not able to really establish any kind of continuity or rhythm on the offensive side of the ball. Lawson having trouble inbounding the ball. Releases up top. Heads up play by Oropesa to just go up to the top. And Clawson will reset the offense. Now you got a lot of time. 23 seconds on the shot clock. Get the ball into motion. Nice little zone defense right now being applied by the Lady Knights. Big three on the way. Pappas can't get it to go. And loose ball fouls against Pauly Pappas. Well, Pappas showed me a good thing. She shot the ball. She didn't react as quickly as maybe you would have wanted it to. Anybody, If anybody knows the shot is not going to be going in, it's the shooter. They should know that right out of their hand. Well, this is big, too, because that's the seventh team foul. So with 2.38 remaining in the third quarter, Soquel, who's only scored via the free throw line, is going to have free throws the rest of the from here on out. That's a big foul. You're right, Tim. Now they're going to have to be able to convert. Azua was blocked by Jamaris, but the second effort. Well, she'll just kind of shove it up there and in. Jamaris again with the foul. That's her third. That is the third. So that's one of the things you're looking at. Halbley with four, Jamaris with three, Pappas with two, and Clausen, I believe, also has two. But you've got to make those free throws. And Sokel, as a team, is four for eight in the second half and five for ten in this game. Down by eight. 222, third quarter to go. Or a pace set, a Pappas, who's double team, finds an open jammer, swings, right elbow, jumper, cost in back iron. No good. Stewart just has that one taken away by Oropesa. Easy seven footer she misses. And Jammers has that one go off her foot. Jammers, I've got it. Melissa is really working hard. She came in, nobody blocked her out. She got in better rebounding position than any of the Soquel Knights. She didn't get the rebound, but she was there. And if she was contested for it, Knights are bringing the ball down the floor with McBride. But right now, Tim, Santa Cruz is working harder. Yeah. Roca took the baseline. She was 
fouled by Pappas. Pappas, that's her third. Now, one thing you have to do defensively, that was a nice move by Rocha. Leans to the right just a little bit, and then a quick first step. But you have to deny the baseline. If you want to overplay somebody, overplay them towards the baseline. You're, you're going to get more help in the middle than you will go exactly. on baseline. I was going to say that there's no help baseline usually with the, those heads up play by Rocha, who is a second year varsity player. <laughs> She goes two for two. And timeout called for by Santa Cruz. It'll be double bonus time for the rest of the game for this uh, SoCal Knights team. Thirty second timeout. Look like that's all Pat Jones really wanted to convey. Here's uh, John Wilson. All right, now come on, let's turn the corner right here. Nine, two, three, one, two, three, go! That was, in fact, Mark Marengo, who is his assistant, that gave some instructions there. Sometimes you just have your assistant coach talk a little bit. It's nice to hear things from a couple of different voices. Yeah, if you look at a lot of the college games and even the pro games, they have their head coach, but they also have two or three assistants, whether it's a... a an offensive assistant, a defensive assistant, or, or big people, little people. It doesn't matter. But it's nice to have something said. Maybe the same thing, different tenor, one different word, it clicks. And very often at the next level where uh, Clawson will be playing, is or paces in and out, the assistant coaches at college and pros actually more often than not run practice as opposed to the head coach. Broca, long heat check. It's no good. Hey, Santa uh, Soquel, excuse me, the Knights are just going to have to get, if they can make some of those threes, that would be good. But they're just going to have to get some better looks at those threes. They've yet to make a field goal in the second half, but they've actually gained a point on Santa Cruz because they've had eight free throws made. That I, we've talked about it many times in many different games. Those free throws will win and lose ball games for you. Clawson. Very slowly up the court. Tall right there at the free throw line. Look at her work from sliding her all the way around. Follows the ball, gets right back up, right at the free throw line, center of the key. Where, she, where the ball goes, she goes. Cap is on a nice drive. It almost looks like the shot was no good, but that was a good offensive position, a possession. Cap has got a good look, but it almost looks like they're kind of even playing a triangle offense. They are. It's exactly what they're looking at trying to do. Diaz is fouled. It's against Tall. That's her second personal. Stewart getting ready to check in the game for the SoCal Knights. Okay, could you explain a little bit, though, with 47.8 seconds left and a six point lead for SoCal to try to come back against? But can you explain for the listeners? A lot of people use the term triangle offense. What is a triangle offense? If you can get that geographical, that little geography on that one, you've got one person, say it's tall. She's going to be one, one point of that triangle, and you're going to have somebody, whether they're top of the key, extended, or to the left or the right, and they're going to work the ball that direction and try and get somebody to cut either backside or on the same side of the triangle. But you're working off of three players with the other two working independently of the ball. Right side, Pappas can't get it to go. Just a five point lead. And again, Sokel has not had a field goal since the second quarter. Now they've got six free throws on the uh, so far here in the third quarter. Getting around quickly, Azua looking inside, not there. See, that's what the Lady Knights are gonna have to do is move quicker without the basketball. Left hand, Azua off the glass. And it's cut. With three seconds left to a three-point game. Lawson, step back, left elbow, got it. That's a big shot because it had been cut to a one-possession game. But Lawson, the talented senior, pours it in, and it's back out to a 36-31 game as we head to the fourth quarter of play here on CTV. Just like last year's game of the championship here at Aptos, the girls' game is coming down to the wire. 
It was, and that was a great job by Clawson. She knew that the time was running out on her. She forced it down. Nobody slowed her down. She was able to get right at the free throw line. Still nobody really getting her face. Somebody like her, and understanding that this time Santa Cruz is doing a little bit better job of distributing the ball around than they have in the past. John Wilson, that intent look that I remember him from a pitcher in baseball from years gone by. I think it was two years ago. <laughs> but if you can stop Clausen, but watch Azua. Nice little pivot back inside. She's used that play a couple of different times. Fake, fake to the left, spin back to the right. Nice little left-handed hook. Very effective. If you can give that upper body just some kind of a move and get your defender to go from one side to the other, spin back, you have an opportunity to have a pretty easy shot. You got to know, too, if, if you're playing against Azua defensively, she's a left-handed player. She's a left-handed dominant player. Right. Yeah, if you can do that with... You watch some of these players, they'll, they'll fake and then go back uh, the other way. They want to make sure that they establish their pivot foot. They may make that fake step inside and turn back. Not so much in, in women's ball, but you get up in the men's, and they'll just fade away, a little fallback jump shot. One of the guys that made that pretty famous, and he didn't have to because he was so doggone tall, is the late, great Will Chamberlain. Slauson into the front court. Larkin, a, a JV call-up, who's just a freshman, comes back with an handed off to Clawson, who pulls up from eight. It's no good. Rebound was off of Hadley, who's back into the game with four fouls. Well, you've got to have her back in. She's a presence underneath the boards. Oh, Stewart had a shot, but could not quite get in shooting rhythm. Diaz, turnaround jumper. No good. She fights for the rebound. She'll tie up Abley, and Diaz will keep the ball on the side for Soquel. Five-point lead for Santa Cruz. It's Stewart, Clark, Rocha, Diaz, and McBride, the original five for the Soquel Knights on the floor. Austin and Pappas have not come out yet for Santa Cruz. No, and they're not going to. You know, that's their offense. That's their defense. Nice movement of the ball by the Lady Knights. And a three for Stewart. McBride was double teamed at the top of the 2-3 zone and immediately she cut and got it off to her teammate Stewart. A lot of switching back and forth. Right, right now, I'm sure Coach Wilson would like to have McBride on Clausen, but Diaz is on her. Pappas is fouled. Pappas is just a half of a step quicker than the night that was Gardner. And that was McBride that got her, but McBride was swimming over from a pick position. Polly Pappas to shoot two. Nice rotation by Polly. Not too many field goals in the second half, just five between these two teams. Yeah. Of course, her dad, Pete Pappas, basketball coach, golf coach. Oh, it hangs on the rim, not there. Clark with the rebound. Diaz, hook shots, too strong, out of bounds, off of Soquel. Well, one of those, you know, the hook shot, if you don't get a nice little high release, that's a hard shot if you're just sort of doing a, a sidearm or a three-quarter. Yeah. yeah. That's a little tough because you don't have any kind of a rotation on the shot. You're not really using the backboard as effectively as you possibly could. Thrown out of bounds. The defense by McBride over on the far side. The SoCal defense has picked up a little bit here in the second half. It's going to have to pick up a little bit more because there's still three down. They have to get a couple of stops with a couple of baskets. Santa Cruz didn't leave this game until deep in the second quarter. So Kell hasn't led this game since Santa Cruz took that lead with about two minutes remaining in the second. Roca is called for traveling. Good. He ran over Pappas. Yeah, great defensive position by Pappas. Roca, the ball is behind her just a little bit. And of course, good job by Clausen. You see, she goes by Clausen. Clausen reaches in to try and get the steal. And that. Causes Rocha to pull the ball back a little bit prematurely, and then that stumble, bumble, fall, and traveling. 
Clausen swings right side Jamrus back to Clausen. Pick and roll, but couldn't find the cutting path base. Clausen steps back, put on the line, jumper, no good. Jamrus second effort's no good. McBride collects the rebounds. McBride, long pass up the court. She finds Clark, back up McBride. Trying to swing it outside. Pappas takes it away. Pappas drives to the lane. With contact, it's no good. Pappas is fouled from behind. Great effort by number 11, Polly Pappas. She comes down. Neither player really hangs around long enough, could have had a blocking, but Pappas does not quit on the shot. She realizes she misses the shot right after upon release. So she's going where the rebound's gonna bounce off to, gets it, takes it out underneath. Clausen, high life wing. The screen from Pappas, throws it down for Polly. Spins, and a hand check. It looks like Stewart's gonna get credit for the foul. So, instead it'll go against Clark actually, and that's her fourth personal. So good is the movement without the ball by the Lady Cardinals, primarily Pappas, but you know, you look around, Melissa Jamaris is the, also the one that has definitely really done a lot of it for me in that she gets down underneath, she establishes position, she doesn't take her eye off the ball, and as soon as the ball goes up, she starts to work into a good rebounding position. Uh, for old time NBA guys, not really old, but Dennis Rodman and Charles Barkley, they used to do that. The Holy Cross seventh grade basketball team having a good time here at the Palestra and Aptos. We're gonna see those kids down the road, Tim. Yeah, hopefully now. We'll see them uh, in some SCCL championship games. 5-12 remaining in the game. And Santa Cruz will take a timeout off of Soquel's. A little bit of a chess match. Well, sometimes you, 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 you take that timeout to see what's going on. Kick it outside to McBride. She steps in, and that's what I'm saying. See how the, the movement with the ball, McBride coming in, the defense rotates inside. She's able to kick it out for a nice season, a good three-point look. Some of the things that the, the Lady Knights really have not been able to do on much at all this no. afternoon. And it's been a very aggressive Santa Cruz defense, but in that particular possession against an aggressive zone, if you're able to, to penetrate and rotate it quickly, you'll get open shots. Yeah, you take Duke, Stanford, Cal's having a great men's basketball, but even, even on the women's side, Tennessee, ball goes in. The defense rotate the ball as quickly goes right back out because the rest of the offense has shifted, either stepped up or rotated over. So it's playing in concert. These are both good teams, Soquel and Santa Cruz, with great coaches, Monique and Pat Jones for Santa Cruz, and John Wilson down there for, for Soquel. They've taught these kids how to do it. Teaching is one thing, and sometimes you get you just forget how to execute. Three-point lead, 37-34 for Santa Cruz, 5-10 remaining. Clawson thought about a long-range bomb, takes it. Doesn't have to think long, does she? Load that cannon and fire. And that is a big three, 40-34. He is fouled from behind. On the floor, that first step, Tim, you've seen it many, many times, and, and you can pick this sport or just about any other sport. If you can set them off balance one side, the quick first step going the other way, you're going to beat them. And that was, if against Hablieb, that's her fifth. Now there's a, there's a discussion on who got called for what. You're right, if it's half, I believe it's five, and it's out of there. They're saying it's on Pat Jones, and correct, should be on Ora Pays. Ora should stick up her hand going.
one of them ought to step up and go, go across and be a good Samaritan and say, I did it. And Jamrus will get the foul. That's her fourth personal. No. So now they moved it to the other person. So now you got Habley with four, Jamrus with four. And if it had given it to Oropesa, she would have, that would have been her first one. Diaz. Again, no rotation. And you can hear it hit sometimes, Tim. Craig Judson, director producer for Community TV Sports, does a great job in the truck. Works tirelessly to get these games hit before we even get here and then producing everything else. She makes the second. One out of two. They've got those ambient mics up by the on the basket. And you can hear the difference on, on a flat shot or no rotation on the ball versus one that's got a little bit of rotation. Well, it's seven for 14 at the line for Soquel in the second half. They're down by five. You go 10 for 14. This game's really interesting. Still a good one. Five-point lead. Great dish. Jamrus lays it up. Tina Jamrus on that one as she stayed active. She kept looking for the basketball. And, of course, the defense pulled away from her because they decided to ignore her. Azua puts it in. I'm just liking how Azua is just using her body, establishing position, he gets the ball down low, backs in, and that nice little hook. Azua's in double figures with 10. Tap they got a switch. Tap leave. That's a nice, strong block by Clark. Good job by Clark to come from the other side. She realized that the double team switch had left the shooter open. She came over and did a nice job of covering. Well, SoCal's only down by five with three and a half minutes left, but they do have to almost lot move of, a little bit quicker. A lot of time McBride off the floor right now for the Lady Knights. Diaz misses the turnaround. Bank shot and cross and just took it away. She'll go all the way to the hoop and that one is knocked away from her by Stewart. Pappas open, left wing, three on the way, back iron, no good. Halbleeve is Great job by Halbleeve underneath her aggressive attacking of the ball. Shot goes up. You can see that Stewart's underneath. She's got to block off. So does Azua. Neither one does. Halbleeve saw where the rebound was going, made a beeline right for it. So she gets the honor going to the free throw line to shoot two. So Kel gets the honor of having a foul called. First free throw is good, and McBride got a very short rest. She walks back into the lineup, and she'll replace Azua. Yeah, position on rebounding. We talk about Barkley, even the great rebounders. They don't back away. You know What Stewart did is she backed away from the ball towards the out of bounds. She's got a swing back where the players could be going, coming from, like Halbley, block them off. Second free throw is no good. And a strong rebound for Clark. Six point lead for Santa Cruz. Three minutes left. Pull up. Banker is no good. Diaz with the rebound. And she is fouled by Pappas. Fourth That's personal. Her fourth personal foul. You know what? I, I might just try to go to work on her. You know, on, on, on either Halbleeve, who's still in the ballgame, or Pappas, but primarily Pappas, to get that fifth foul called against her and, and work on getting her out of there. Diaz will make the first. She's got three points on seven foul shots. This is an important defensive rebound for the Cardinal. Great block out by Halby. Use the body defense on the rebounds. There's that switch. Crossing, long shot. Hit off the back iron. And a fresh shot clock off the miss. And right now it's, it's a good one-on-one -on -one battle out front. Jamrus and Melissa Jamrus from 
Nice medium range. They needed a third score today, Kurt, and they got it. Ten they for Cameron. Melissa's doing a great job. Her presence is underneath the board, and that one was that nice shot. So Kel's going to have to answer with a three. Long two is in. Clark's first basket. Four points on the evening for Clark. And rightly so, since you don't have to worry about a 10-second violation in women's basketball. Clawson taking her sweet time. Clawson, backdoor cut. Jamris, and that's going to be a call to foul every time. I think Stewart might have gotten all ball, but you just can't hack from behind. What? Yeah, you're right. If you're reaching around, it doesn't matter if you got all ball or not. The official sees that hand come around the body of the person who has the basketball. They're going to, nine times out of ten, they're going to blow the whistle. So with 137 remaining, Sokel will use a timeout. And the Sokel Knights have uh, really have just had a trouble scoring from the field. We'll see nice Clawson. That nice crossover. Notice everybody comes up to go after her. Stewart. Gets it underneath to Melissa. Melissa starts to go up. Stewart reaches in from the right side. Gets the foul called against her. But all of that was set up simply by having Clawson drive. As soon as that pass is made to somebody other than Ashley or Polly, then let's take that down. Let's go three, one, two, three, nine. So you heard the strategy, as soon as a pass is made to somebody not named Cross or Pappas, they're going to start fouling. Maybe not a bad idea, is 137 left? There have been worse ideas that have come out of huddles, not so much the Soquel huddle. Well, it's but been worse out of any yeah. huddle you've, you've headed, Kurt, probably. <laughs> well, that's a, a great staff over there with Mark Marengo, Kayani Thomas, who's also the, the Frost Soft coach, and John Wilson. And this is a giant. I'm only going to say she was in the sh shooting motion. And that's important because she misses the first free throw. So Jammers will get another shot at it. Yep. Big rebound opportunity. Soquel has to control the boards on this one. They're going to have to block out. Second is missed. Rebound oh, is did. collected by Pappas. Clausen up top, just going to hold it. McBride all over her. And it's a five second call. McBride really pushing the heat, pushing up tight on that one. I think there's maybe some mental block on Clausen as well. Yeah, she probably fainted on just, you know, mentally for just that brief moment. Roca has a three, needs to hit this one. It's no good. McBride fought for the rebound. She couldn't get it, and a blocking foul is going to be called by Stewart. On Stewart, way away from the basket. 1-11 left. Clawson will have free throws. She'll have the one and one. Clawson with the one and one. First one. Rolls in. That's 12 on the night so far for the uh, point guard, shooting guard, and offensive machine for the Lady Cardinals. And it's up to a seven point game. 110 remaining. So Kel's got to move quickly. Back up, three, nailed it! Stewart, in the double figures. Stewart last year was, she came in and she was really throwing down the threes. And this is what Coach Wilson, they're missing one of their primary offensive weapons. Of course, they did that last year too. And they need some people to step up. Now McBride's done a fine job. She had 10 points in the first half, only two so far in the second half with 12. Azua's doing a nice job of stepping up and trying to take up the slack. Stewart nailing 
two threes here in the fourth quarter, but they may be just a little bit too little too late. So Claussen has the one and one. She clanks the first one. Sokel still with a chance, 54 seconds left. McBride hurries it up. Left wing, Stewart, open three, nailed it! There she is. She did it last year, she's firing it up this year. There's a 16 second shot clock, game clock differential. John Wilson saying, get back. They didn't jam it. This is the first, she misses the second. It's still loose and thrown up by Havley, but she'll get two free throws. But they had a chance to just play straight up defense. John Wilson was screaming at his team to get back and, and they just didn't. No, they were lazy getting back on defense. They've that's occurred to them a couple of different times here. Halbley's getting a chance to go to the charity stripe. And these could this could put it out of her way. Jammers had two golden opportunities to put it out of reach. All she had to do is just make that one. This is the first. See, this is the other thing where Sokel has been needed a lot of help. The first time around, they did really well on the offensive, defensive boards. This time, not quite as well. Second free throw is also no good. And the rebound is still killed. Three second shot clock, game clock, differential. Timeout, John Wilson. 29.2 seconds left. Possession arrow pointing to Santa Cruz. Both teams in the double bonus. 47 46. Soquel is trailing Santa Cruz. They have not led since the second quarter, midway through. And they're trying to take their first lead of the second half. How many times? Let's listen in if we've got a. All right. All right. It's a good job. We're coming back. We're going to point out this whole thing. Come on, let's turn it down to the girls. Let's really put some off. Huh? I know. Hey, we just want to get to the foul line. Okay. We just need a two pointer, but we don't need to shoot the ball right away because we want to give them time. Okay. So, um, what, what favorite play do you guys like? Interesting. Well, how about what, that? What favorite play do you got? And that's a brilliant thing. A lot, a lot of coaches do that. Okay, I can call this play or I can call this pitch. Take, you know, whatever sports you're in with the old basketball. I call it. The kids go out and have to execute it. But if they don't feel good about it, quickly down the floor, nice right into shooting rhythm goes Stewart. And she's nothing but nylon on that one. It's that's almost like the best angle to shoot at, kind of. The I like that angle. angle. Yeah, that to me is one of the better angles. Here comes McBride. Well, you want to get a shot off the first good shot you can get. You don't want to force it. McBride. Once again, there's a four-second shot clock, game clock differential. 15 seconds remaining. Clark down. Diaz throws it up. She's fouled by Jamaris. Jamaris with the foul. Great patience. They did exactly what the coaching staff for Soquel said that they're supposed to do. Patience, patience. Nice bounce pass. Had Stewart try to throw an aerial pass, that pass would have been intercepted and down the floor would come Santa Cruz and probably called a game set and match. Still not a game set and match with 11.2 ticks on the clock. Diaz is going to be shooting two, but they're going to take the full 30 seconds. They're going to make Diaz think about these two free throws, the freshman at the line. She's three points all on free throws in the second half. Yep. And in comes Larkin, who has three points. Nice thing for a JV call-up to come in and you know be part of a pretty big ball game. And she's a shooter, too, so if she's got a chance... Gonna let it fly. 11.2 seconds left. Diaz, first free throw. No good. Okay, now the rebound becomes Hughes. Pappas underneath, Halbleib underneath, half to block out. Clark and McBride right next to him. And the second. Got it. That ball game. 10 seconds left. Clausen. They don't want to foul. Brings it up. Time out called by Santa Cruz with seven seconds left. It's a big decision here by the referees. Now they'll take it out. They're going to have to go to the backcourt. Yeah. 
Timeout was called when the ball was still in the backcourt. So it wasn't advanced. John Wilson was screaming. That gives you about a second and a half left because it takes maybe more, if about two and a half seconds to get from the point they were at. Yep. It's up there. You see. Diaz gets that ball in. Pappas really quick. You know who it's going to go into is right into Clausen. And John Wilson seeing that they had that, but he doesn't want to have a foul call. Would, would you almost even, with this little time left with seven seconds left, would you almost even double Clausen off the inbounds pass with the, instead of having somebody on the ball? Would, would you think about that, Kurt? I think Clausen's might be the one taking the ball out of bounds. But, um, yes, I would think about that to answer your question. If it's Pappas, I, I want to keep the ball away from her hands, double her, let the ball come in. Uh, if that's the case, what Santa Cruz may do, run Pappas away, you know, as far away from the ball as you possibly can, run another one of the players over to it, get the ball to it, get it right back in Clausen's hands, and have her bring the ball up very quickly. She can shoot. She can get inside about 23 feet and let her rip. She's got a good chance to make it. Santa Cruz has two timeouts remaining. They're going to use one to talk this one over a little bit more. I think they're going to they're save the last one. The last one is a really pivotal timeout, too, because if you have trouble getting the ball in, you've got that timeout. You need that timeout, and both of these coaches are very, very aware of it. If that referee starts to go into the five count, after he hits once four has been gone down, maybe it's different in high school ball. I'd have to check the, check the rule books, which unfortunately I don't have one right here. Left it at home tonight. I never bought one. Uh, <laughs> What, after after the four count is gone, at certain levels, you can't call that get me out of here timeout. We'll see how they set up. They're going to set up with four stacked, so no real ability to double Clausen. Yep, nobody on the ball, and this is a good job. And Clausen comes out free. Diaz is on her. Four seconds left. Clausen for the championship. It's going to have an off-balance shot that is no good. And for the second straight year, we are headed to overtime in the SECAL Girls Basketball Championship. Uh, second straight year, Sokel and John Wilson are headed to overtime. I think we're going we're gonna to step aside for, for a moment. 47 all is the score. You're watching the game of the week, the SECAL Championship here on CTV Sports. Back here courtside at Aptos High School, 47-47, Santa Cruz and Soquel. This was a one point game with 11 seconds left, two free throws, the second on the way for Diaz to tie this one up. And she got it with 11.2 seconds left. And the freshman in a high pressure situation sends this game to overtime. It'll be a four minute overtime and There'll be a tip at the start of this overtime. If there's a second overtime, there'll be a tip from then on. Well, there's one thing about this tournament, Tim. We saw it last year. It's intense. It's exciting. And usually these two teams, one has won it. You know, as far as the league is concerned, they had the better record all the way on through. In this case, Soquel with 11-1. and one. And the other team would like to be a co-champion. So both teams will shoot the same side they were shooting in the second half as well. They'll shoot towards their bench. Big tip. Diaz and Pappas, and it goes to Santa Cruz. Now it's just called patience and run the ball. Look at Larkin left alone. Didn't even think twice, but she misses it. McBride, her opposite 15, on the fast break. Bounces it for Diaz. Kickball. Kicked out by Clausen. Wise decision by 14. She's sitting back there underneath. I, you know, me? I may have wanted to stop and pop from a couple of feet right on out. There's a turnover. And the fast break. Clausen versus Stewart. Stewart is scored on by Clausen. Clausen 16. Is too quick. You give her that head of steam. You've got to come out and stop her. You can't keep backpedaling. At one point in time, you got to stop her at the free throw line. Tyler Stewart, 
who hit two monster threes late in this game. Diaz, no good. And it's off of Zua out of bounds. Diaz just takes that shot and she releases it just a little bit too low. If she could get just a little bit higher on that, get that higher release, may have different results. Slowly up the floor comes Clawson. There's no hurry. Nice. Papp is setting that screen. Stewart against Clawson. They want to isolate. Clawson step back, 18 foot. 51-47. You're kind of darned if you do and darned if you do it with Clawson. If you come up on her, she's quick enough as you make your move up to step around you. If you leave her that shooting area, she's able to make it. Look at Diaz coming alive. Diaz, a big basket, 51-49. Clawson is picked up by Diaz. Larkin, McBride is on Larkin. Screen set out high. Nice little crossover move. Again, another quick, nice little pick and roll underneath the Pappas. And she has that one stolen away. Diaz ends up getting credit for the steal, but it was Azua who put her hand on it. Right wing, Roca for the lead, in! Rocha, who can also shoot the three, has been quiet. And this is the first lead for the SoCal Knights since the second quarter. We're in overtime, two minutes remaining. Lawson gave up her dribble. Pappas steps back, she's got an open three, shorts. But it will bounce in! Shooters roll, good rotation, soft on their iron. In it goes, that's 18 points on the night for Polly Pappas. 54-52. Diaz, left wing, rotates it. Stewart has the baseline. Goes up, no good. Second effort is also no good. Knocked out of bounds by Larkin. Soquel will keep it, 91 seconds left. Clark coming in, Azua going out. Azua just had a great second half with, you know, with the presence down low in the key. Working hard to get some good percentage shots and some big points. Diaz, three on the way. Front iron, no good. That would have given Soquel the lead, and Santa Cruz can take a little bit of air under, out of the basketball. It's about 118 remaining. Now they're gonna roll up, double high post. And it's again, let's see how they're gonna move without the basketball. Pappas. I think that's gonna go against Clark, and if it is, that's her fifth. It is. Clark just ran into Pappas. Now, Polly Pappas moves very well without the ball, but you can see she's got a very quick first step. She gets underneath, and she's uh, she's one of those players that is enjoyable to watch because she doesn't rest on the offensive side nor the defensive side. You know, offensively, if you, know, if you go by the theory of basketball, you can rest on the offensive side. And, and Pappas doesn't rest on either side. Asua checks back in. Correct me if I'm wrong, too. Azua was at St. Francis last year in this game. So the first one is good. You may be right on that one. There's 19 points for Pappas, 16 points for Clawson, and 10 points for Jamerson. I think, you know, Melissa, she has been key. McBride up the court, minute remaining. Soquel down by four. Azua, 20 on the shot clock. McBride looks to pass. Underneath, that's a foul, yeah. Pappas, that's five. Again, offensively, Tim, when you create movement, you're setting picks, a little reach in, but more than anything else, it was that hand right on the hips and just a little bit of a push off. Pappas just picked up her fifth. You're gonna take the full 30. John Wilson taking advantage of that one to bring his ball club over. Shiloh Tall comes into the game number 42 for the Lady Cardinals. Outstanding basketball game by Pappas. I mean, you, 
you work as hard as she does, tailing some of these better bat, some of these good basketball players. Stewart goes to the line, and these are two giant free throws. Have to hit the first one. She does. Stewart has been one of the players that has really stepped up tonight. He's got 14 points. And he is up to 15 with 13 of those in the second half. Right. Interesting. I wonder who's more nervous, she or her dad, who's a great dad, who's a great athlete, still does play baseball. More nervous. I'd go with the dad. I would too. Tossing all the way down. Uh, she ran over Roka. Jammer, this one is just jammed in the middle finally. Sokel with a seven second differential takes over. Smart move by McBride. Everybody was hustling down and she says, wait a minute, I'm gonna slow this horse down. Roka to the hoop, that one just wouldn't roll for her. And you have to foul now. Clausen is fouled in the backcourt by Roka. And Rocha picks up the foul, 18.2 seconds left, 56-54. seconds left. Clausen, if she hits both free throws, can put the Cardinals a big step closer, and she misses the first. Now it comes down to that nice little one possession game. Wilson calls timeout. Remember, folks, to hang on to our player of the game, which is sponsored by George H. Wilson. Yeah, mechanical contractors. Rusty Reed will grab said player, or players, at the rate this is going. Right now, I mean, You've got to go if it's Santa Cruz, you could go with Pappas, you could go with Clausen, maybe even Jamras, Sokel, McBride, Stewart. Or you could bundle. You could get, <laughs> yeah, go to both, maybe, who knows? Well, we'll reset it for you. Sokel, they're going to be able to, to have a chance if they can pick up the rebound. At worst, they're going to have a chance to have uh, uh, down by three, 18 seconds left. What do you think about the foul or don't foul? Right here. I wouldn't foul. If I'm if I'm Santa Cruz, I don't foul. We get this shot for Pappas who steps back. Works it very well. Notice that great screen by Hobley, but she just able to sit back and there's that nice shooter's bounce in it. It goes very soft touch. Of course, right now you gotta remember, Paulie's out of the game with five fouls, so offensively. Santa Cruz is uh, down a little bit. But they've got Clausen going to the line. She missed the first one. Santa Cruz is saying, we're going to get people as far back as we can. Not going to contest this rebound. We're going to give this rebound to Sokel. But Sokel's got to remember to block out Clausen. And they did. And they did. And Clausen just threw it up. Went asleep. They were going for that one. Shot is up. Who knows better than whether they made it or not? The shooter. That was going to be a tough one, but somebody out high, whether it was McBride or Stewart, as soon as that ball hits the room, they've got to step in front of that shooter to block him out. Now she gets to go Good back, new life. go to and put it first. out of sight. Heads up play two by her just to throw that one up because she knew she was going to get fouled no matter what. So just have the chance at the end one. Second he is also good. It's back out to a four point game. McBride up the floor. Diaz takes it all the way herself, pulls up. Too strong in the middle. Azua lays it up and good. And Sokel will use their final timeout. 6.8 seconds left. How big was that reaction and that setup for Clawson and underneath? They're just, they don't stop. Diaz going down the middle. They finally stop her, but she's right there. Had a good look. And then Azua gets that offensive rebound for the putback. I'd say that's one of the things that Santa Cruz has done so well is that offensive side of the board with Jamrus and with, with uh, Pauly Pappas underneath and Hobley. They've been able to control the boards a little bit more than the Lady Knights have. 
Lady Knights are far from dead. They've still got an opportunity. But they're they're going to have to foul. And you know the ball is going to go into the hands of number 14. So off the inbounds play, Sokel, six seconds left. It's, I mean, you can almost, I think with six seconds, you really don't even have enough time to, to go for a steal, really. You just, now, ball's you just in. Have to foul. That's a last timeout by Sokel, so they do not have any more timeouts. Ball goes in, and you just put the clamps on somebody. Hopefully, you can get the ball to get to Oropesa. Hobley bringing the ball in. Great job by Clausen. They're going to have to follow him. They do. And she just, just slipped Diaz. She did a nice job of working not only off of picks, but also off of the defenders. And that good cutting ability by Ashley got her free, and she goes back to the charity stripe. Good idea, too, to have McBride in the lane here in case there's a miss and you have to push it up quickly. And Dawson makes the first free throw. Boston with seven points in the overtime. Second. Eight Good. points. 5.4 seconds left. Stewart to Roca. An extra pass. Bryant's three. Doesn't matter. And the Santa Cruz Cardinals in overtime take the victory 60 to 56 over the SoCal Knights. I'll tell you this tournament never ceases to amuse me, amaze me. Great basketball, tough break for the Lady Knights. They get it into overtime, but it's the offense and of Ashley Clausen who comes up with four free throws and two field goals, eight points in the OT. Pappas, by the way, also came up with five points in the OT, so it went down to the deadly duo, and the Santa Cruz Lady Cardinals come out on top, 60 to 56. Yeah, a big victory, 60 to 56 in overtime. The final for the SCCAL Championship. The Cardinals take it home. Uh, it's second straight year, we've gone to overtime, and. Well, it was just an emotional win for both these teams. It ended up being an emotional game for Soquel. It's cliche to say it, but this is not the last game they'll play this season, thankfully, and they'll get a chance to, to show the rest of the Central Coast section the strength of the SCCAL as they head out to the CCS playoffs. Now, it'll be, uh, it'll be interesting to see where these two teams are seated. Both have a good preseason record. Both did very well in league. So you'll find out what division they're going to be in. And they very well could be end up in, in that same division. And we have co-players of the game with Rusty Reed. Our George H. Wilson players of the game, the senior captains for Santa Cruz, of Ashley Clausen, Polly Pappas. Incredible game. Overtime victory. How about that overtime? I think he had eight points. It was uh, it was really stressful, but you know we all came through and it went with us. And uh, you a little less stressed because you watched the last ten seconds from the bench. Uh, what were your feelings at that point? I was just hoping my team would pull through after all the hard work we've done and like everything, and they did, and I was so excited. How were you able to regroup after the loss to the same team last week? Um, we wanted to come out harder than last week because last week wasn't enough, so we did. We came out harder and stronger, and it was paid off. Ashley, your thoughts on uh, the week in between now and then? Uh, like Polly was saying, we want to work hard, and also me and Polly, it's just our senior year. We want to get one more, you know, one more championship. And, you know, our team pulled through, and we all, you know, got the W. The only two seniors on this team, you're the leaders on and off the court. What a great way to finish it off. You only have a few more high school games left in your whole life, Ashley. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm glad I get to spend it with Polly. She's my best friend, you know. And <laughs> I know, it's just, it's amazing. It's, it's great. And just as a wrap up, Polly, your thoughts going into CCS and how you'll be wrapping up your high school career. Uh, I want to end it on a good note. And I mean, this makes me really happy. So I'm just happy with whatever, as long as we work hard and have fun. Well, thank you, Polly Pappas. Ashley Clausen, 
co-SCCAL champions this year. Congratulations and thanks for stopping to join us. Our George H. Wilson player of the game. Now back to you, Tim. Thanks, Rusty, and thanks to Ashley and Polly. Our George H. Wilson player of the game is brought to you by George H. Wilson, mechanical contractors, family owned and operated for over 90 years, providing heating, plumbing, and mechanical contracting services. George H. Wilson is a proud member of Think Local First on the web at geohwilson.com. Once again, congratulations. A picture-perfect ending for the Santa Cruz Cardinals. 60 to 56, they defeat Soquel in the girls' championship game in overtime. Clearing out of Aptos High School, anybody who came into the building tonight treated to a classic girls' SCCL championship, 60 to 56. The victory for second seeded Santa Cruz. Congrats to the Santa Cruz Cardinals for winning the championship with the coach Kurt Edwards. I'm Tim Swartz and uh, Kurt, this was just a classic game. It was. It was everything that was advertised. You got the number one, number two seeds in and they were pretty much, you'd go either way with them the way they played. Hey, I'll tell you this much. Santa Cruz came to play and they played better in the paint than did the Lady Lady Knights, and, and that was the difference. you got to give the Lady Knights a lot of credit, too, because as we look at how this game kind of played out in our final game highlights, they were down by as many as 10 in the second half. Santa Cruz was really clicking at all cylinders. Clausen and Pappas, those were the two time big scores, but they found Oropesa for that basket, and as I mentioned, it was as big as a 10-point lead for Santa Cruz in the second half. It was, and Azua doing a fine job. She would establish her presence underneath, and that little turn and that little jump hook but Santa Cruz, you're right, continued to make pressure, push it inside, then kick it all the way out. Jamaris, you see, last time these two teams played, there wasn't another score outside of Pappas and Clausen. Tonight, there were, and Clark throwing that one down from outside. But this was a couple of big threes from Stewart, almost from the same spot. She would hit back-to-back -back threes on back-to-back -back possessions and tie this game up late. She is a shooter and watches. Great job. One, two, fire it up. Great rhythm. Just nails the bottom of the net. And so Kel finds himself right back into it. But a little errant pass in the quick hands of Clausen and that little crossover dribble. And underneath she goes and lays that ball right up and in. That was the first basket of overtime after Diaz hit a free throw with 11 seconds to send it to OT. And this to me is a play of the game with a minute and 50 left the shooter's roll for Pappas. Yeah, give Hobley, number 25, a lot of credit. She set a nice screen out there to make that one. Here's my play of the game. You forget to screen off the shooter when you've got the game within reach. Clausen misses the second of two free throws, but they don't box her out. She gets the rebound, does, doesn't score on that one, but goes back to the charity stripe, drops in two free throws, and from there on in, it was just... Katie barred the door, Santa Cruz had it. And they give Soquel credit without their leading score. They still took Santa Cruz to overtime. So Soquel wins the regular season championship and the postseason championship goes to the Santa Cruz Cardinals. We wish the best of luck to Coach William, Coach Wilson and the Joneses, the co-head coaches in the CCS final. So we hope you enjoyed that girls championship game. Do not go anywhere. We're coming back at you with what should be a high scoring affair. Santa Cruz and Aptos in the boys game coming up next here on CTV Sports.